Hi, my name is Dr. Chris McCoy. Um, I am an assistant professor of theater at William Jewell College, uh, but we are here today to talk to you about a project that we're going to work on, which is creating a documentary film for the Ferris Farm. Um, we received a grant from the Missouri Humanities Council to create this documentary, and um, we hope that uh, some students like you might be interested in participating. Um, so because this is sponsored by the Humanities Council, humanities are the subjects that you study in school, such as languages, history, uh, social studies, political science, um, and arts. Uh, and so we are hoping to use this money given to us from the Humanities Council to create, to use all those different skills in creating this film. Um, now, as a theater uh, director and theater teacher, that's what I do all the time is I work on that. Um, so one thing we wanted to talk about is just about all the different jobs that are associated or all of the behind the scenes things that you may not always think about. You know, when you go to see a film or you watch something on Netflix at home, um, you see the actors on the screen, but you forget all of the different people. Just if there's one or two actors on, on that screen, there are literally hundreds of people behind the scenes who are making those things happen. Um, and that's what we are appealing to you to hopefully help us create, but also just to kind of give you an idea of all the different jobs associated. So I'm gonna start, um, most of my experience has been in theater rather than film, but the two are very linked because obviously uh, we're both creating stories. Um, and using actors to tell those stories. So those are probably some of the roles that you're familiar with. Um, we usually start with a playwriter or if it's film, a screenwriter. They're the ones who write the script uh, and that tells um, the actors what they're going to say, have all of the lines, but it also has stage directions, which are super important because that lets the director and all the designers know um, uh, how that story is then going to play out either on the stage or in this case, on the screen. Um, speaking of screen, I'm gonna share my screen for a moment to show you this little flow chart. It might make it your head spin because it's pretty uh, elaborate, but this is just a breakdown of all the different jobs involved backstage on the theater. And you see down here, actors don't even enter until way down here. Um, so some of the jobs that are really important, you have, like I said, the playwright or the screenwriter who writes the script. Uh, and then the next probably most important person um, would be the director, uh, because the director's job is to take that script and figure out how they're going to bring it to life. And I say it's an important job because that's what I spend most of my work doing uh, when I direct shows here uh, at William Joel College or out in the community, or when I am directing a documentary film like we're gonna do here. You also see everything above this director line. All of these people are basically the ones who help raise the money or put um, all of the things into place. So for this project, like we had someone write a grant, we have the board of directors for Ferris Farms that we're working with. Um, so there's all these kind of administration positions that people don't necessarily think about. Um, those are also people um, who deal with the money side of things. Um, you might have a literary manager, or I like this word dramaturg. Um, that's particularly important for this project because a dramaturg is the person who does the um, literary and historical research that then can inform the script that is being written. So since this is a historical documentary about a historical person and a historical place, uh, that dramaturgy component is gonna be really important um, to this particular project. Uh, and then, like I said, once we get, once all the money has been raised and everybody's been hired, uh, then the director starts um, doing what we call the creative process, and that's working usually with different designers. And you see the important designers here are the scenic designer. That is on stage, the person who designs the scenery, um, so whatever whatever the set looks like on stage. In film, it's a little different because you can actually go on location. So that uh, will be <clears throat> more what we're using for this project. Costume designers, obviously, what the people are wearing. Um, lighting designer is really important and often overlooked because, well, obviously, you have to see what you're doing, but uh, lighting designers in theater uh, work with different colors and different textures so that that helps evoke different feelings within stage shows. 
Um, and indeed with, uh, when you're doing a film, if you're on location, sometimes the light that you have on that location is good enough, but a lot of times you have to bring in extra equipment to um, really help illuminate uh, what you're filming. A sound designer is another job that a lot of people don't think about. This could be as basic as running microphones, like how are you hearing my voice right now for this thing that I filmed? The sound designer would manipulate all of that, but it also can include, of course, like music, underscoring. Um, it could include any sound effects, like explosions or things that need to happen. Sound designers oversee all of those different skills. And then sometimes you uh, might be working with a music director, choreographer obviously would be person who does dance, uh, and that's more in uh, musical theater or musical films. And then you see lots of these jobs like trickle down. So under a scenic designer, you have a props master. Um, and a prop is anything that the actors touch or anything that directs the set. So this is my office, but if it were a set, then the props designer would have hung all these pictures, put my cup here that I get to drink out of during the scene. Um, very important. And uh, they cover lots of different jobs. Then you have uh, scene shop foreman, carpenters, painters. These are the people who build the set or actually construct uh, the set as it tends, uh, as it's going to be seen. Um, now, Dave, my colleague here is gonna tell you more about the film side of things in a, in a moment. Uh, so not all of these jobs are gonna be associated with this project in particular, but this is a great opportunity for you to kind of learn about all the different jobs that are associated in theater or film. Um, production. Um, it would be really great if you could come take a tour of our, our space and see backstage or see behind the scenes of a film how all of these. So that might be an opportunity that you get if you uh, participate in this project. So we also have like a technical director or supervisor who helps organize all these things. Obviously if you have uh, uh, things being built for props, things being built for the set, things being built for costumes. Someone has to organize all those people talking together and getting all those different departments to get their things put together all at the right time. Um, planning a uh, calendar and um, doing your production schedule is super, super important. And so that person is kind of responsible for making sure everything happens on time. And then under costume designer, you have a costume shop or wardrobe shop. Uh, those are the people who build all the costumes, make them, sometimes they go out and find them. Uh, we will be using costumes for this project, so uh, if that's something you're super interested in, that might help. Um, makeup and hair also usually falls under costume designs. That's, that's even a bigger job, I think, in film than it is in theater. Um, and then drapers and stitchers are people who actually take uh, the designs that the designer has drawn and then they build it on mannequins so that they take a two-dimensional image and then create it into the actual clothes that are being worn. Um, kind of like as a director, I take a script or a story and then create it into a living, breathing, three-dimensional project. Um, under the lighting designer, they often will have electricians who help with, you know, just put the lighting up. Uh, obviously there's lots of cords. Um, it's all done by electricity. So where all that goes and making sure it's, there aren't any tripping hazards or any fire hazards um, that falls under their position. Programmers are actually the people who program the lights to turn on when they need to be on, what intensity or what level they're going to be at. Um, if there's any special effects, the programmers are the ones who do that. And then light board operator and spot ops are the people who run the lights during the actual production. Um, under sound designer, you have, as I mentioned earlier, sound effects and amplification. So amplification usually means microphones. Um, and then the sound operator and A2 or audio two are the people who run the sound during a production. Um, wardrobe supervisor and dressers are the people who make sure the actors get into the costumes and then usually have to clean them on a regular basis. And a stage manager uh, or a production stage manager is another very, very important person because <clears throat> as a director, um, my job is to help create the vision for the film or the play that I'm doing, but the stage manager is the person who really just keeps it all going. So the stage manager is kind of my right-hand person throughout the process. They're going to make sure that we're on time, that we are doing our regular rehearsals. They write what we call rehearsal reports and send that out to everybody on this list so that everybody understands um, exactly what's going on in the project. 
And then uh, once the production is ready to open, uh, then the stage manager is the one who runs the show. So they make sure the actors are ready to go on and that they're in costume when they need to be, that all of the uh, technical pieces are ready to run. Um, so that's a very, very important job. <clears throat> And then over here, a company manager is another job you might not be familiar with. Um, and actually, in the few films I've done, some of my work has been under company management because it's basically taking care of the actors. Um, sometimes when actors have to fly in from New York or LA to do a show, the company manager is the one who arranges all of that and communicates all of that. Um, so that covers... Uh, some of the roles that are associated with theater. Oh, let me stop sharing my screen here. <clears throat> so like I said, um, I have worked in the theater. My background before I became a professor, um, I worked in professional theater all across the United States, mostly in administration and education. So my job was to, uh, I worked in the office side of things to make sure that uh, fundraising was being done, that marketing was being done, um, there's lots of advertising and marketing. Obviously, you have to sell tickets or make sure people come and see your film. Um, and then the education and outreach component meant that I was doing things like this, where I was working with schools to uh, either come and see shows at the theater or maybe get classes, or maybe we would have actors who would go out and do workshops with students. Um, so that's another component of theater administration that a lot of people don't think about but is a, a very big job out in the world. So now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague here and let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does. Fantastic. Well, my name is Dave Simmons and I am the owner and creative director of a video production company called Thill Media, T-H-I-L-L -L Media. Um, and that is named for the gentleman that founded the company who's now retired, but um, we've kind of carried on in his footsteps. So. Uh, Company's been in existence since 1992, and we're what's considered a full service video production company. So that means we work on everything from very initial concepts. So being involved um, at this moment, like we are with um, you and Chris and um, the Ferris Farm folks, um, all the way through to production. So that means that we're on location, we're there with the cameras and the, the lights and the audio package and everything that it takes to basically fill this little box with the, the things that you're used to seeing, whether that be in, in films or documentaries or, or things you watch on television. Um, we're also all the way through post-production, which means we also put all of those elements together um, into the finished product. So that includes all of the, all of the behind the scenes work that, that Chris just talked about, along with the stuff that'll go on on location, Chris working with actors and us getting all of the best takes of, that we can of the script. And then we take all of those elements and bring them back, add different color grade effects, add different soundtrack elements, music, fully sound effects. Um, all that comes together. And then in the end, what we have is a finished product. So I'm, I've always been considering myself a video producer, which um, kind of has a different connotation than it does in film and or even live theater. But that basically means I'm a jack of all trades. So my background goes back to um, news days when I used to be a, a news shooter. So I learned to shoot and then I learned to edit and then I learned to write and then I learned to direct. And so through the years, I've basically just kind of acquired the toolkit to basically do everything from the very beginning to the very end, which is a great luxury um, I work with a lot of very talented people that are very specialized. So when Chris mentioned a lighting director, so I mean, I work with very talented lighting directors that that's all they do. They're really focused on just the lighting aspect. Um, you know, directors of photography are, is the guy behind the camera that makes it look like everybody wants it to look. But the biggest thing is, is all of that um, takes place after all of this amazing amount of work goes into a project to get us to a shoot day. And Chris kind of mentioned that, all those behind the scene folks. Um, and that's kind of where we're gonna, where we're gonna start this project. Um, and some quick background, um, we'll be working with a historian who is the true um, expert on, on the content, but um, Ferris Farm, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, 
um, is a historic property that's owned by Clay County. Um, and then I think it's managed and operated by the Friends of Ferris Farm, which is a nonprofit. But it is a pre-Civil War home that sits on 160 acres just outside of Liberty, Missouri. Um, it was taken over um, by Mr. Ferris um, in the, I think, the 20s, um, where he lived and turned it into basically what we call a interpretive farm or a, a, a working farm, but basically with the the notion that it would be a learning tool, that it would take kids from schools or kids from the area and give them a day on the farm, show them what it was like to to break ground with a with a plow or plant seed or, or care for animals. Um, so an interpretive or a learning farm is kind of where where it was when um, Mr. Ferris um, passed it along to to Clay County, Missouri, and Clay County, Missouri has kind of kept that going. But um, at this point, they're really interested in telling the story of the farm, um, which dates back to just after the Revolutionary War, um, up through the, the Civil War or pre-Civil War when the current home was built. Um, Mr. Ferris's uh, dedication to teaching and keeping that land preserved as a teaching tool. Um, and then to current day where it still, it still remains that way through Clay County. So it's our goal um, to set about creating about 15 to 20 minutes of content um, and probably broken up into a couple of smaller chunks that basically captures that story and tells that story for people that are interested um, to find it on the internet um, or social media or for folks that are visiting the farm um, to kind of give them an idea of what it might have looked like in 1859 uh, when the house was built, you know, what it might have looked like in the 1930s when Mr. Ferris was there um, with school kids working. So it's a, a documentary, but only in the sense that we'll be kind of documenting um, the script as created by the historian. So, but a lot of that will be through reenactments. Um, so actors in period um, costume, um, playing those different parts. Um, some of it will be just um, highlighting aspects of the home as it stands now. But a lot of it will be going back and trying to recreate this historical perspective um, to try to basically tell the story of, of Ferris Farms. Um, so a little bit of my background, um, I kind of shared. So I go back to when I was a, a, a writer, producer, camera person for a news department years and years and years ago. Um, well, let's go way back. Um, I started with a fascination. I watched a lot of, I watched a lot of TV as a kid, starting with cartoons when I was little. And I was always fascinated by the people that had to sit in a room somewhere and create those things. Um, so probably like a lot of you, I like to draw and, and sketch and, and doodle and, and thought I wanted to be a, a cartoonist. Um, turns out I wasn't as good of a doodler as, as I thought I was. Um, but I, I learned that there were, there were people behind my favorite TV shows, that beyond the actors, that there were camera people and directors and directors of photography and audio guys and, and you know, a post-production specialist. Um, so I went to college and got a degree in, in media production um, and was lucky when I got out that I came back to my hometown of Kansas City, Missouri um, and uh, went to work for the public TV station here. So for my first number of years, I was um, basically a jack of all trades there as well. It was a small shop, so I got to learn a little bit of everything and then went on to work at a couple of news stations doing some various jobs. But um, I've been really lucky to kind of see all aspects of different kinds of production. So from local documentaries that I've worked on all the way up to um, feature films to um, some historical documentaries of, of a little larger scale. Um, but at the base of all of those things, what I've learned is that there's an amazing amount of tools and an amazing amount of talent that goes into all of it, but it's very base is storytelling. So what we set out to do is fill this little box with a story. And so that starts with um, an idea, really. And so our idea in this uh, instance comes from the folks at Ferris Farm and, and a goal that they're trying to reach. But then working with historians and experts and script writers to, to get that on a page um, and eventually do what we call storyboard, which is kind of, um, kind of pre-visualization of what the video is gonna look like. So whether that's with pictures or color palettes um, or sometimes sketches, um, a lot of times we'll hire artists that will actually you know, draw out what a frame will look like. Um, 
within those storyboards, we start to, to work on a little bit what Chris um, had mentioned about stage direction, um, different ways that we can move the camera, different ways that we can move talent, um, but all with the purpose, um, everything that we do. So from the script, to the set design, to the costumes, to the set direction, to camera movement, to the camera we choose, to the lens we choose, all of that is basically driven by the story. So, um, you know, basically where we're gonna start this project is in that pre-shooting world. So before we break the cameras out, which we will, um, that'll also be part of this project in the next phase, but we start with script development and storyboarding. So really, I think the, the help that we want from you at this phase are your thoughts and ideas of, of different ways that we can tell this story. I've been doing this a long time, but most of my audience, or at least some of my audience, are going to be um, folks just like you. So people that visit the farm or are just curious about their local Clay County or Liberty history. Um, and so you probably have a lot of different ideas um, that I won't have. Um, so we're curious and we want to, and we want to, we want to capture those and make sure that we're not only telling our story, but delivering it to our audience in a way that's informative and entertaining and engaging. So, um, kind of working with you to maybe get some different ideas on how to best tell that story. Uh, maybe working with you on some storyboard concepts that we can kind of really start to visualize, um, what, uh, this will look like. Um, and again, traditionally that's been, you know, with an artist with a pen sketching stuff out. In the digital age, that's changed. I mean, sometimes those are pre-visualization uh, pre photographs, you know, that we might be able to go to the home and, and pick out some locations. But um, this first phase is really working towards shoot day number one, um, all the stuff that comes before that. And the more prepared we are before shoot day number one, the smoother shoot day number one goes. Um, and then the second phase will turn into production where we're actually on location with actors and cameras and um, lighting equipment, audio equipment, and there's roles for you to be involved there as well. Um, and hopefully a lot to learn from us, um, but also um, we have a lot to learn from you. So um, it's, our, it's our goal to um, engage you, hopefully in ways that fit your likes and desires and your curiosities. Um, but, you know, we're, we're hoping to benefit um, from that as well. So again, kind of in short, this is a project that's really locally based, um, very historically driven. Um, but, you know, this will tell a, a piece of the history of Clay County, Missouri and Liberty, Missouri. So um, believe it or not, you're a part of that. So the, the way that things are today started way, way back in the 1830s when this county was started. So um, it's kind of an interesting journey and we hope that you'll come along um, on it with us. So um, that's kind of all I've got, I guess, production wise. Uh, there, there'll be some times down the road where we, we can engage and, and questions can go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but I think right for, for now, anyway, I'm the, the, the video expert for lack of a better term. So, um, and again, so documentary filmmaker or video producer, but um, that's kind of my role, so. Yeah, thanks. Um, so as Dave mentioned, we're, uh, I, I like calling this the pre-production phase because that would be the word that we use in film or in theater. Uh, so we don't have a script yet. We uh, have just started doing the historical research. So our process is really going to be taking that research, figuring out how to put it into a script, and then how do we take that script to the next phase of bringing it to life through the film? Um, and all of that has to happen, like he said, before we even you know, get the actors or the, the cameras ready to roll. Um, so uh, our goal is uh, once a week we'll be meeting, and it might be like a virtual meeting like this, something that we film ahead of time and share with you, or uh, we'd love to interface with you and perhaps have meetings where um, you're able to interact with us live and in person, or at least virtually and in person. <laughs> uh, so anyway, thanks so much for being here, Dave. And um, we're really excited about getting this project started and we hope to meet you all soon.
Yeah, my absolute pleasure. Thanks for being here. And a big thanks to um, the folks at Ferris Farm. So friends of Ferris Farm. So if you're curious about what that is, you can certainly Google it. A big thank you to uh, Mr. Smith for helping us um, create this aspect of it, which is engaging with you, which we're very excited about. So thank you guys for your time. Um, and thank you, Chris. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye.